Nice one, cool dudes. I'm here in one of my favourite places on the Isle of Wight, the beautiful Ventnor, also known as Mayfair by the Sea. And I'm about to undertake a ghost and smuggling walk. Sounds pretty terrifying, right? I've used Gay Baldwin's ghost books, which you can get here as source material for this walk, as well as lots of other smuggling books and other information. All right, let's go on with it. Good luck, everyone, especially me. the Isle of Wight and particularly Ventnor are famous for smuggling but this place here Orchard Bay is home to one of the biggest ever attempts at drug smuggling in the UK a man called Michael Tyrell bought this place back in 1999 for about 657,000 because he knew it had a private beach then in 2000 he attempted a 3,000 mile voyage across the Atlantic with the aim of unloading 879 pounds of cocaine here on this beach. But problems with the weather and their outboard motor meant that they were forced to remove the cocaine further round the corner, a different place, and carry it across treacherous cliff paths on their backs. The men had been under surveillance from the local customs and they were caught and their ringleader was sentenced to 26 years in jail. Who'd have thought that this was the place where one of the British's greatest drug smuggling busts took place. I'm retracing my steps to the Botanic Gardens now, but I'm spending most of this walk wondering what I'd say if I encountered five men walking the other way with huge bags of cocaine on their backs. Looks like you're gonna have a good night, lads. Probably just end up getting killed. What would you say? Why don't you write it in the comments below? And here we are, in the remnants of the old Royal Hospital, where over 100,000 patients were treated for tuberculosis before it closed in 1964. But it was when it was demolished back in 1969 that the haunting started to take place. There were reports of workers hearing screams from the old operating theatre, and there was a smell of ether when they tried to knock down certain rooms. And also there were several sightings of a young girl of about 10 years old who would stand there staring at the workers while they demolished the buildings. There were so many reports that they actually commissioned an exorcism, but still the hauntings continued. Ghost hunters came from far and wide and news even spread to the Dick Van Dyke show. That's right, where the old curator uh, phoned in and spoke to Dick Van Dyke about all the haunted goings on. And it's said that if children fall over or graze themselves or have an accident in the car park, it always takes place in exactly the same area. So if you ever come to this car park and you see someone with a very white face, it's probably because they've just seen they charge five pounds for parking. Now it's down to one of the best places Steep Hill Cove, and look at Ventnor Cricket Clubs. Excellent ground. Slope, please. This is in February, and 
is a good time to come to the Isle of Wight, I think, because everywhere is empty, so you get the whole place to yourself. But keep your eyes peeled on the horizon, cool dudes, because it's not just on land there are ghosts on this walk, because out there, people have spotted a three-masted ship, a ghost ship. Back in March 1843, the HMS Eurydice was returning from Bermuda when it was caught in a snowstorm and it capsized just out in Sandown Bay and all of its 319 crew, save two people, were killed. An odd fact is that the sinking of the ship was witnessed by none other than Winston Churchill who was staying at Ventnor as a child on holiday. And many people have seen the three-masted ghost ship out at sea, including none other than Prince Edward back in 1999. A lot of beautiful Victorian buildings in Ventnor. This is Winter Gardens. This was one of the most fashionable places to be in the 1930s. A lot of closed shops in Ventnor, which is sad. But also, there's another ghost story about those too. Because back in 2003, a woman called Amanda was here with her four-year-old niece, who suddenly stopped by an old junk shop and pointed in the window and said, look at the dead man waving in the shop, but the shop was empty. Amanda then looked at the sign at the door of the closed shop, which said it was closed due to illness of the owner. Who was it that her niece saw inside? <gasps> Heading into Ventnor now to a place called North Street. Ah, here it is. These buildings behind me are separated into flats, and in the top flat of one of them lived a lady called Wendy, who one night got a rude awakening when she felt her feet nudged at the end of her bed. She looked up to see two Victorian girls covered in dirt staring back at her. And then it got scarier. They said, we're here to see you, Wendy. She turned round to wake up her husband, but before he had a chance to open his eyes, they disappeared. It gets worse. That Christmas, there was a knock on the door and she opened it to see some carol singers. They sang her, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Sounds nice, right? She went to put some money in their jar and the coin fell through and hit the ground. It was then she realized they were ghosts. Not just any ghosts, but the two children she'd seen at the end of her bed. Oh no, you ruined Christmas. You're probably thinking, oh Marek, we haven't had any phantom footsteps ghosts in this episode. Well, don't worry, I've been saving that one till last because in Ventnor Library, they have often heard phantom footsteps coming from the music room. Not that scary, right? Except the music room is always locked. Let's go and investigate, cool dudes. I've just come out of the library where the librarian was an incredible help. She actually took me up to the stack where the ghosts were heard and she told me all the stories that they would hear 
things being dragged across the floor. And they've heard all sorts of things like books falling from the bookshelf when no one's around. And then they found the library cards all muddled up when no one's touched them. So it seems to be quite an active ghost place. Thank you very much to the librarian for helping me. But that's very interesting to go into Ventnor Library. What a great way to end the walk. Well, if you've enjoyed that Cool Dudes, please consider joining the Cool Dudes Walking Club and helping me make more videos or buying some merch. Luckily, some blokes just started doing some chainsaw work. Brilliant. Thanks for watching, Cool Dudes. And um, prize draw coming up for members. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Stay cool. What a splendid place. Uh, apologies for the delay in me posting videos. The COVID finally got me after three years. I'm still recovering, pretty exhausted. Also, I've drawn a picture which is available on eBay for you to bid for if you would like. All proceeds go towards making videos. Oh yes, it is time for a new emoji. If you are one of the amazing 312 people who support me on YouTube, you can now use this ghost emoji. Mm, that is pretty good. Okay, it is time for the prize draw. There are, as I said, 312 YouTube members. So I go to the random number generator and say, random number generator, generate me a number. Generate. 253 and then I go to YouTube go to my members put them in order of how long they've been a member and then I'll count from the longest member 253 down to this person Kevin you have won the incredible prize of strawberry laces stickers badges mini Marek and spotters handbook as well as a card from Stripey Art. Excellent. All right, cool dudes. I'm not sure if I make sense anymore, but don't forget the gallery with all your mini Marics is coming up next and you can buy them on the website. Uh, they're available, available sporadically. My brain's absolutely fried. All right, cool dudes. That's about it. Oh yeah, one more thing. Stay cool.